everyone. Welcome back to Las Vegas. It's theCUBE, live at AWS reInvent 2022. This is our fourth day of coverage. Lisa Martin here with Paul Gillen. Paul, we started Monday night. We filmed and streamed for about three hours. We have had jammed pack days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What's your takeaway? We're rounding the final turn uh, as, we, as we head into the home stretch. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, as it has been since the beginning, this is a show with a lot of energy. I'm amazed for the fourth day of a conference how many people are still here. I am too. And how, and how active they are, how full the sessions are. Uh, huge uh, crowd for the keynote this morning. You don't see that at most of the day four conferences. Uh, everyone's on their way home, so so people come here to learn, and they're um, and they're still learning. They are still learning, and we're going to help continue that learning path. We have an alumni back with us. Tomer Sharon joins us, the CPO and co-founder of Dremio. Tomer, it's great to have you back on the program. Yeah, thanks for uh, for having me here, and thanks for keeping the the best session for the fourth day. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I like that. That's good mojo to come into this interview with Tomer. So last year, last time I saw you was a year ago here in Vegas at Reinvent 21. We talked about the growth of data lakes into data lake houses. We talked about the need for open data architectures as opposed to data warehouses. And the headline of the SiliconANGLE's article on the interview we did with you was, Dremio predicts 2022 will be the year open data architectures replace the data warehouse. We're almost done with 2022. Has that prediction come true? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're seeing almost every company out there, certainly in the enterprise, uh, adopting uh, data lake, data lake house technology, uh, embracing open source uh, kind of file and table formats, and, and so I think that's definitely happening. Of course, nothing goes away, so you know, data warehouses don't go away in, in a year, and actually don't go away ever. We still have mainframes around, but certainly the trends are, are all pointing in that direction. Describe the data lake house for anybody who may not be really familiar with that and, and what, it's, what it really means for organizations. Yeah, I think you could think of the data lake house as the evolution of the data lake, right? And so, you know, for uh, for you know the last decade, we've had kind of these two options: uh, data lakes and data warehouses. And you know, warehouses, you know, having good SQL support, but uh, and good performance. But you had to spend a lot of time and effort getting data into the warehouse. You got locked into them. Uh, very, very expensive. That's a big problem now. Um, and data lakes, you know, more open, more scalable, but had all sorts of kind of limitations. And what we've done now as an industry with the lake house, and especially with uh, you know, technologies like Apache Iceberg, is we've unlocked all the capabilities of the warehouse directly on object storage like S3. So you can insert and update uh, and delete individual records, you can do transactions, you can do all the things you could do with a, a database directly in kind of open formats without getting locked in at a much lower uh, cost. But you're still dealing with semi-structured data as opposed to structured data, and there's, there's work that has to be done to get that into a usable form. That's where Dremio excels. What, uh, what has been happening in that area that to, to make, uh, I mean, is it formats like JSON that are uh, enabling this to happen? How, how are we advancing the cause of making semi-structured data usable? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, uh, you know, I think that's all changed. I think that was maybe true for the original data lakes, but now with the lake house, you know, our bread and butter is actually structured data. It's all it's all tables with the schemas, and you know, you can uh, you know create table, insert records. Uh, it, you know, it's 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 really everything you can do with a data warehouse. You can now do in the lake house. Um, now, that's not to say that there aren't like very advanced capabilities when it comes to you know JSON and nested data and kind of sparse data. You know, we excel in that as well, uh, but we're really seeing kind of the lake house take over the, the, the bread and butter data warehouse use cases. You mentioned open a minute ago. Talk about why, it's, why open is important and the value that it can deliver for customers. Yeah, well I think if you look back in time and you see all the challenges that companies have had with kind of traditional data architectures, right? The, 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 a lot of that comes from the, the, the problems with data warehouses. The fact that they are, you know, they're very expensive, the data is, you have to ingest it into the data warehouse in order to query it, um, and then it's almost impossible to get off of these systems, right? It takes an enormous effort, tremendous cost to get off of them, and so you're kind of locked in. Um, and that's a big problem, right? You also, you're dependent on that one data warehouse vendor, right? You can only do things with that data that the warehouse vendor supports. And if you contrast that to data lake houses and open architectures, where the data is stored in entirely open format, so things like Parquet files and Apache Iceberg tables, that means you can use any engine on that data. You can use Dremio's SQL query engine, you can use Spark, you can use Flink, uh, you know, there's a dozen different engines that you can use on that. 
both at the same time, but also in the future, if you ever wanted to try something new that comes out, some new open source innovation, some new startup, you just take it and point at the same data. So the data is now at the core, at the center of the architecture, as opposed to some you know, vendor's logo. Yeah. Uh, Amazon seems to be bought into the lake house concept. They had some big announcements on uh, day two about uh, eliminating the ETL stage between uh, RDS and Redshift. Do you see uh, the cloud vendors is pushing this concept forward? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm, I'm, Amazon's a great, great partner of ours. We work with uh, you know, probably 10 different teams there, everything from you know, the S3 team, the, the Glue team, the, the QuickSight team. Um, you know, everything in between, and uh, you know, their embracement of the, the, the lake house architecture, the fact that they adopted Iceberg as their primary table format, um, I think that's exciting. As an industry, we're all coming together around standard ways to represent data, so that at the end of the day, companies have this benefit of being able to you know, have their own data in their own S3 account, in open formats, and be able to use all these different engines, without losing any of the functionality that they need, right? You know, the ability to do all these interactions with data that maybe in the past you would have to move the data into a database or, or a warehouse in order to do, you just don't have to do that anymore. Speaking of functionality, talk about what's new this year with Dremio since we've seen you last. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of new things with, with Dremio. So, um, yeah, we now have a, a full Apache Iceberg support you know, with DML commands. You can do inserts, updates, deletes, um, you know, copy into all, all that kind of uh, uh, stuff is now you know fully supported native part of the platform. Um, we uh, we now offer kind of two flavors of Dremio. We have uh, you know Dremio Cloud, which is our SaaS version, fully hosted. You sign up with your Google or you know Azure account, and and, and you're up and uh, you're up and running in in, in a minute. Um, and then Dremio Software, which you can self-host, uh, usually in the cloud, but even 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 outside of the cloud. Um, and then we're also very excited about this new idea of data as code, and so we've introduced a new product that's now in preview called Dremio Arctic, and the idea there is to bring the concepts of Git or GitHub uh, to the world of data. So things like being able to create a branch and work in isolation. Uh, if you're a data scientist, you want to experiment on your own without impacting other people. Or you're a data engineer and you're ingesting data, you want to transform it and test it before you expose it to others, you can do that in a branch. So all these ideas that you know, we take for granted now in the world of source code and software development, we're bringing to the world of data uh, with Dremio Arctic. And when you think about data mesh, a lot of people are talking about data mesh now and wanting to kind of take advantage of, of those concepts and ideas, you know, thinking of data as a product. Well, when you think about data as a product, we think you have to manage it like code, right? You have to, uh, and that's why we call it data as code, right? The, all those reasons that we use things like GitHub to build products, you know, if we want to think of data as a product, we need all those capabilities um, also with data. You know, also the ability to go back in time, the ability to undo mistakes, to see who changed my data and when did they change that table. All of those are, are part of this, uh, uh, this new catalog that we've created. Are you, you talk about data as a product, that's sort of intrinsic to the data mesh concept. Are you, uh, what's your opinion of data mesh? Is, is the world ready for that radically different approach to data ownership? You know, we are now in dozens of, uh, uh, dozens of our customers that are using Dremio uh, for, uh, to implement enterprise-wide kind of data mesh uh, solutions. And at the end of the day, I think it's just, you know, what most people would consider common sense, right? In a large organization, it is very hard for a centralized single team to understand every piece of data, to manage all the data themselves, to, you know, make sure the quality is correct, to make it accessible. Um, and so what data mesh is first and foremost about is being able to kind of federate the, or distribute the, the ownership of data, the governance of the data, um, it still has to happen, right? Um, and so that is, I think, at the heart of the data mesh, uh, but thinking of data as kind of allowing different teams, different domains to own their own data, to really manage it like a product with all the best practices that, that we have with that, uh, super important. So we, we're doing a lot with data mesh, um, you know, the way that Dremio Cloud has multiple projects and the way that Dremio Arctic allows you to have multiple catalogs and different groups can kind of interact and share data among each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that we can connect to all these different data sources even outside your data lake, you know, with Redshift, Oracle, SQL Server, you know, all the different databases that are out there um, and join across different databases uh, in addition to your data lake. That, that's all stuff that companies want with their data mesh. What are some of your favorite customer stories that where you've really helped them accelerate that data mesh and drive business value from it so that more people in the organization can have access to data so they can really make those data-driven decisions that everybody wants to make? 
I, I mean, there's, there's so many of them, but uh, you know, one of the largest tech companies in the world, creating a, a, a data mesh where you have all the different departments um, in the company that you know, they, they, they were a big uh, data warehouse user. Um, and it kind of hit the wall, right? The, the costs were so high and the ability for people to um, kind of use it for just experimentation, to try new things out, to collaborate, they couldn't do it because it was so prohibitively expensive and difficult to use. Um, and so what they said, well, we need a platform that different people can, they can collaborate, they can, ex they can experiment with the data, they can share data with others. And so at a big organization like that, the, their ability to kind of have a centralized platform, but allow different groups to manage their own data. Um, you know, several of the largest banks in the world are, are also doing data meshes with Dremio. You know, one of them has uh, over um, over a dozen different business units um, that are using using Dremio, um, and that ability to have thousands of people on a platform and to be able to collaborate and share among each other um, that, that's super important to these guys. Can you contrast your approach to the market to Snowflakes, because they have some of those same concepts? Snowflake's a very closed system at the end of the day, right? Uh, closed and very expensive, right? I think they, uh, if I remember seeing uh, you know, a quarter ago in, in, in one of their earnings reports that the average customer spends 70% more uh, every year, right? Well, that's not sustainable. If you think about that in a decade, that's, your cost is going to increase 200x. Most companies are not going to be able to swallow that, right? So companies need, first of all, they need more cost-efficient solutions that are um, you know, just more approachable, right? And the second thing is, you know, Dremio, you know, we talked about the open data architecture. I think most companies now realize that the, if you want to build a platform for the future, you need to have the data in open formats and not be locked into one vendor, right? And so that's kind of another uh, important aspect. Um, beyond that, Dremio's ability to connect to all your data, even outside the lake, mm -hmm. to your different databases, NoSQL databases, relational databases, and uh, Dremio's semantic layer where we can, uh, accelerate queries, and so typically what, you ha what happens with uh, data warehouses and other data lake query engines is that because you can't get the performance that you want, you end up creating lots and lots of copies of data. You, for every use case, you're creating a, a, you know, a pre-joined copy of that data, uh, a pre-aggregated version of that data, and you know, then you have to redirect all your then data you to those problem. individual yeah. well, things. it's expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's expensive, it's hard to secure that because permissions don't travel with the data. Um, so you have all sorts of problems with that, right? And so what we've done because of our semantic layer that makes it easy to kind of expose data in a logical way, and then our query acceleration technology, which we call reflections, which transparently accelerates queries and gives you sub-second response times without data copies, and also without extracts into the BI tools. Because if you start doing BI extracts or imports, again, you have lots of copies of data in the organization, all sorts of refresh problems, security problems, it's, it's a nightmare, right? Yeah. And that just, collapsing all those copies and having a, a simple solution where data is stored in open formats and we can give you fast access to any of that data, that's very different from what you get with like a, a Snowflake or, or any of these other great. companies. Great, that's a great explanation. I want to ask you, early this year you announced that your Dremio Cloud service would be a free forever, uh, the, the basic Dremio Cloud service. How has that uh, offer gone over? What's been the uptake on that offer? Yeah, it, I mean, it is. <laughs> and thousands of people have signed up and, and it's, uh, uh, I think it's a great service. It, uh, uh, you know, it's very, very simple. People can go on the website, try it out. We now have a test drive as well. If, if people want to get started with just some sample, public sample data sets and like a tutorial, we've made that increasingly easy as well. Um, but yeah, we continue to you know, take that approach of you know, making, it, uh, you know, making it easy, democratizing these kind of cloud data platforms. Um, and, and kind of lowering the barriers to adoption. How effective has it been in driving sales of the enterprise version? Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of business with you know that that we do, like when it comes to, to selling, is you know folks that you know have educated themselves, right? They've started off, they've followed some tutorials. I think generally, developers they prefer the first interaction to be with a product, not with a salesperson. And so that's that's basically the reason we did that. Before I ask you the last question, I want to just. Can you give us a sneak peek into the product roadmap as we enter 2023? What can you share with us that we should be paying attention to where Dremio is concerned? Yeah, you know, actually a couple, couple days ago here at the conference, we, uh, we had a press release with all sorts of new capabilities that uh, we, uh, we, uh, we just released, and there's a lot more for, for the coming year. Um, you know, we'll uh, shortly be releasing a variety of different performance enhancements, so we'll be, uh, in the next quarter or two, we'll be, um, you know, probably twice as fast, just in terms of raw query speed. You know, that's in addition to our reflections and our query acceleration. Um, you know, support for all the major clouds is coming. Um, 
you know, just a lot of capabilities in, in Dremo that make it easier and easier to use the platform. Awesome. Tomer, thank you so much for joining us. My last question to you is, if you had a billboard in your desired location and it was going to really just be like a mic drop about why customers should be looking at Dremio, what would that billboard say? Well, Dremio is the easy and open data lake house and you know, open architectures is just a lot, a lot better, a lot more a lot more future proof, a lot easier, um, and a lot, just a much safer choice for the future for, for companies. Um, and so, hard to um, argue I with that. People to take a look. Exactly. That wasn't the best. Uh, that wasn't the best. Uh, you know, billboard. I but that's think okay. it's a great billboard. A, awesome, Tomer. <laughs> thank you so much for joining Paul and me on the program, sharing with us what's new, what some of the exciting things are that are coming down the pipe quite soon. We're going to be keeping our eye on Dremio. Awesome. Always happy to be here. All thank right. You. For our guests and for Paul Gillen, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live and emerging tech coverage.